Servus Männer, it's Red Pill Germany again. Today I want to take a look at what is going on at the Central Asian Republic of Kazakhstan. We are seeing an uprising there, the people are angry and fed up with their government and in return the president of this authoritarian republic has asked for help in order to get the situation under control again. Russia responded and also Belarusian troops have been called to Kazakhstan as a so-called peacekeeping mission. There are casualties on both sides, both officers have been injured or killed, but the authorities also reported that they have liquidated many of these protesters that they refer to as criminals of course. And when you look at the whole affair there are many parallels to what is going on also in western countries but also there are fundamental differences and I want to discuss that a little bit from my perspective in today's video. So first of all what comes to mind is the reason what sparked this outrage. Of course that has not just one reason but there is one spark right. I think it is safe to assume that um, people in that country have been unsatisfied for a long time already but the spark in this case was the increase of gas prices and you have to know that Kazakhstan is a resource rich country technically that country is a very rich country with many resources also energy resources but many people live in poverty or are not really rich very poor and then you also have to see that the country gained independence. It is one of these uh, former Soviet republics. And the guy who became president and state president for a long time was already part of the Soviet elites that ran the country. That was Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, after whom the capital is also named. The current president is Mr. Tokaye. So we have these old socialist communist elites running the country and they make a lot of oil revenue and that revenue is not really invested back in the country in a way that benefits a large part of the population it seems. So that is the underlying reason I think for the general dissatisfaction of the people quite understandably so. An interesting parallel to western countries is that in France the Gilets Jaune, the yellow vest, they also were originally protesting higher gas prices in France and that was also not always peaceful I have to say. Which is however pretty normal or standard for the French. So now the pictures that we have seen and the video footage that you can see from Kazakhstan shows burning government buildings and really very aggressive and violent riots. So this doesn't seem to me like a peaceful protest so I could not really compare that to what is going on in the Netherlands or in Germany or in Canada or Australia where people are really harassed and attacked by law enforcement for just practicing their normal lifestyle for taking a walk or going to church or something like that for peacefully gathering. That is not what we see right now in Kazakhstan. However, also there the president gave the command that security forces can shoot without warning and that is not really what we see in Europe either. And this is why I would be very careful to compare these things even though there are some things on an abstract level that are of course very similar. Yeah, there are a lot of parallels here. There is a corrupt government, the people are fed up and the regime is using force against the people to disband them or to crush their rebellion. A while ago I also reported about Kyrgyzstan where the White House was stormed after election fraud or the allegations for election fraud that was. So overall one has to say that Central Asia is not really a very stable region politically. What Kazakhstan is however is strategically very very interesting. Not only do they have a lot of oil resources and other things like rare earth I think. They are also a large producer of uranium and right now many countries are thinking about boosting their nuclear energy capabilities. 
But besides all that, strategically or geographically, the country is very interesting because the train routes from Europe to China go through Kazakhstan. That is this Silk Road project of the CCP. These transport lines go through Kazakhstan. Very, very important. So stable political conditions are, of course, highly desired by the Chinese and also by the Europeans. But it is the old Soviet friends who are sending in their troops right now and I have been told that this was very usual during the time of the Soviet Union. We have witnessed that in Germany too in the 1950s. I made videos about that how in eastern Germany in the GDR the workers and the people they rose up against the Soviets against this socialist regime and then the Warsaw Treaty or the Soviet Union whatever you want to call it in this way they were sending in foreign troops to crush this uprising and I think many other people from other Eastern Bloc countries made similar experiences that it was always some alliance troops from neighboring countries that were sent in because I mean it is obvious they have much less scruples to um, harm these people um, if you would ask uh, people to harm their own compatriots uh, there is a much higher threshold for committing these violent acts against the population then so it is always easier to send in foreign troops and you can always label that a peacekeeping mission or you know a mission to stabilize a country against a foreign influence or something like that and uh, in a way that is another parallel I mean think of all these peacekeeping missions that the United Nations and the EU and the Americans that they go on and they always talk about nation building and stabilizing and keeping keeping the peace and stuff like that. And by all means, I'm not saying that uh, Russia and the West or the Chinese, that they're all basically the same and everything is uh, totally on equal level here. I'm not saying that whatsoever. However, it is really hard to make the case, in my opinion, that uh, what people did in uh, former Yugoslavia, for example, was a peacekeeping mission or something like that. And uh, what the Russians do now there is something completely different or what the Americans and their allies did in the Middle East. Was that so fundamentally different? Anyway, so what I have heard is that there was a lot of damage, a lot of vehicles were destroyed, there were casualties, a lot of buildings were attacked. But overall, the situation has been brought under control by the regime, of course, also with the help of their foreign allies. But it is kind of interesting how people in the West are um, watching that, how they are reacting to it. In former times, when something like this happened abroad in a rather unstable, highly corrupt, kleptocratic regime, you watch this with a huge amount of distance. And it happens in a faraway country and is by no means comparable to our countries. But right now, I'm not so sure anymore. As I have said already, it is not as bad um, right now here. The stakes are not as high on both sides or let's say the uh, level of violence and confrontation is not nearly at that high level yet in the West. But the general situation that people are fed up and that regime forces and uh, officers are using heavy force against protesters, against normal people, not people who try to loot stores or uh, commit um, other crimes, but who are just walking on the street. And there is a sense now in many Western countries that law enforcement officers are not just your friends and they're not there for your protection only. And of course, in many countries, this uh, feeling or this perception has never been that way in the first place. But in many others, including Germany, it generally used to be the case. And now when you look at officers on the street, many people tell me that they think uh, differently or ambivalently about that. A couple of years ago, they still felt safe or nothing at all when they saw an officer on the street. And now they actually try to um, get away from them as fast as possible or switch to the other side of the road. They just get an unsafe feeling around 
officers now. Anyways, that brings me already to the end. What I have learned from that or what was new to me is that how smooth and how seamless this support from Belarus and Russia came to that country. That means how active these old Soviet Union ties are still. Just remember Vladimir Putin was an agent in the Soviet secret service. He was stationed in Leipzig, Germany also. So it seems like that these ties from back then are still very active and they can build on them, they can count on them. These old bonds are still active and they're using them and we can see that right now how they are still using them in Central Asia. Servus, Kameraden!